I hope you're ready for another time lapse because that's definitely what it's going to be today. <laughs> Last week I created this drawing for a draw this in your style exercise that I was doing and if you want to see the process for this piece I'll leave a link to the video up here. This was the first time I had ever used Indian ink in this way and I fell in love with the process. I've just been thinking about it ever since so today I'm going to do a whole new piece using this ink. Kia ora everyone, this is Hey Johanna. So just quickly before we get into the time lapse, I wanted to talk a little bit about this ink. Winsor & Newton sell two different types of black drawing ink, the black Indian ink and the liquid Indian ink. These two look and sound the same and are really easy to get confused, but it is important to know the difference. Both can be diluted with water, but only the black Indian ink is waterproof. This, in my opinion, makes it best for illustrations like this, where you're going to be layering up different washes over one another, and that way you won't pick up any of the ink underneath. The liquid Indian ink, on the other hand, is more similar to traditional Chinese stick ink. It's made up of these ground up ink particles mixed with water and if you let it rest you can see it separate out a little bit. It's more suitable for calligraphy work. I'm telling you all this because if someone had told me then I probably wouldn't have bought the liquid Indian ink because I don't really do calligraphy that much. I wanted to do illustrations like this and when I tried with the liquid Indian ink it just did not work. I ended up having to go and buy the black Indian ink and now the liquid Indian ink mostly just sits on my shelf getting a bit ignored but it is still good to have as part of my collection. I'm sure there are a thousand different inks out there for different things, but if you are wanting to do an illustration similar to this, then what you want to look out for is that your ink is waterproof, because otherwise this is not going to work. And if you choose to buy Winsor & Newton ink like I have, it is the black Indian ink, not the liquid Indian ink. I know, they make it really easy for you basically having the same name. Anyway, that's enough talking, let's get to the drawing part. I thought I'd film my sketching process in this as I don't usually add that into my videos and the reason for that is I have a desktop easel which I like to use when sketching and I can't film top down on a desktop easel because the video would be all warped and on an angle and it just wouldn't look good. So I use a desktop easel because if I draw just on a flat surface my drawings end up looking really skewed and awkward and I find that having it up in front of me like that is just way better and I can get the proportions of people better and I definitely recommend getting a desktop easel if you can because it has just taken my drawing from 0 to 100 like immediately. I always used to worry about why my drawings looked so awkward and weird and I can't believe I never learned how to draw on an angle like that but with my desktop easel I can get things looking just so much more natural. I would often do a sketch and think I was really really proud of it and then I'd pick it up and see it from basically straight on and it would look so awkward and awful and that's what I just wanted to avoid. So that's why I have a desktop easel and that's what I usually use for my sketching and yeah. So to film the sketching process I had to do an over the shoulder shot which I don't love doing because I feel like I have to sort of move out of the way for the camera but you know it turned out okay. So I did use a reference for this pose. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below because it's a good reference. But I changed it a little bit to make it a bit more like me. I didn't mean it to be but I changed the hair and I realized that it started looking a little bit like me so I added in a nose ring and I added in a stretcher and I just changed the features just a little bit and you know basically made it a self-portrait. This sketch was inspired by the art style Art Nouveau, specifically the works by Alphonse Mucha. This is from around 1890 to 1910 that the style really took off and I think it is the coolest art style that has ever come from humans. Like it's just so so cool. Art Nouveau is often inspired by natural forms and like the sinuous curves of plants and flowers. It's super dynamic, there's so much movement, there's you know asymmetry, there's so much exploration and the ornamental quality of it and it's just really really beautiful. Art Nouveau works often use toned down colors as well which are inspired by nature so you get greens and browns and soft reds and it's just gorgeous so definitely go and have a look at Art Nouveau especially the pieces by Alphonse Mucha who is one of my favorite artists. So Alphonse Mucha's work often had women in draped loose clothing and this is not something that I have much experience with. I usually try and stay away from clothing and cloth and folds and everything because I've never really learned how to do it but my reference was pretty good and I just gave it a try and I'm so so glad that I did because it looks so cool in ink and I really surprised myself with how it came out. I, I learned a lot about cloth and I learned a lot about how to shade the folds and everything and I just think it came out so cool so I'm thrilled that I did that. I should probably talk about the ink a little bit. So on the left I've got six different mixed strengths of ink varying from nearly fully black to nearly fully water. I know it doesn't look like it from above but they are different I promise. So I pretty much fully went over the piece in the lightest shade and then began to layer up where I needed it in the shadows, under the chin, under the arm, in the face a little bit and you know in the folds of the fabric. So the folds of the fabric scared me as I said earlier I just didn't know how to do it. I just didn't know where to start or how to begin but anyway I just kind of dove into it with these dark shapes and then built up the value on the rest of the sleeve 
and I swear it went from looking like a mess to looking like a freaking renaissance painting in like two seconds. Okay, maybe, maybe not a renaissance painting, but my point is, is that I was messing around with it for ages and tweaking it and then all of a sudden it was just kind of done and looked great. <laughs> And I really shocked myself with that. Again, I think it looks so cool in the ink where it's really easy to see the values and have it look, you know, realistic or, or at least natural without having to mess around with finding the right color. And that's something that I really struggle with. Value is super, super important and I often get sort of distracted by the hue and can't really tell the value of a color. So I layer things up and it just looks wrong. And so this is a really good exercise. Experimenting with value is super, super important because value is what's gonna make your painting look realistic. It's gonna take your artwork to the next level. When I do digital painting, I actually fully work in black and white before glazing in the color. And I know that's not really what you're supposed to do. In fact, I'll probably get looked down upon by most artists, but because I didn't use color for so long, I have to do it that way as I hadn't learned how to use color the right way. I think this is an exercise that really anyone can do. And it's really important to understand value, not to mention it's actually kind of easy and really, really fun. I didn't find this too hard at all. It's one of my more complex pieces, but it was one of my easier pieces. So. I'm gonna do a lot more of this in the future just to help me sort of practice. I think it's a great exercise that any artist should experiment with. The most tedious part of this whole thing was shading and detailing and all the extra decoration in the image because after I'd done the subject, I was just kind of a little bit bored and didn't really wanna do anything else. So finally I signed it off feeling so, so proud and so surprised of myself. I couldn't believe I could produce something that looked so cool and so lovely. This piece came out so much better than I ever thought it would. I'm honestly blown away by how cool it looks. I know I usually work in color, but working in just black and white with ink was so refreshing for a change. So this piece was inspired by two Inktober drawings I did last year. I knew I wanted to redraw both of these as larger pieces, and I kind of combined them together and created this. I think it turned out amazing, so I'm really happy I did that. It's kind of a self-portrait because this one was supposed to be a bit of a self-portrait, but I guess it's kind of open to interpretation really. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this then that's good because I've got a ton more Inktober redraws that I intend to do and I had so much fun with this one that I just can't wait to get to the next one. Kia ora everyone, have a wonderful evening and I'll see you next time. Bye! I love how last week I was like, holy shit, this is like one of the best ink drawings I've ever done and now ba-bam, that's way better. I mean they're both cool but that's definitely better. <laughs>